Hello, before we get going on this particular uh, video segment, I wanted to just mention a few things that I always forget to. One is, like everyone says, if you want to see more of this, click the like button and also subscribe uh, below to uh, get notifications of when more content's posted. Uh, the second item is I uh, put in chapters you'll see along the timeline and then if you expand the description below the um, there's timestamps with descriptions of each and either one you can jump to different segments of the video allowing you to you know rewatch something that you thought was interesting or I guess on the flip side jump uh, and skip things that you think are boring uh, and then final piece or final two pieces is I also try to put where applicable links to uh, other content creators that I've gained inspiration from for this particular video uh, or for this particular segment and then uh, I also, even though video might look long, uh, pay attention to the very end. I stick in some tips or tricks that I've learned along the way or lessons, and I, I list those. And they're meant just to be kind of an appendix that you can jump to if you want, but it does sometimes make the video look longer. So hope you enjoy, and uh, thanks and providing your feedback. So today is wall day uh, for the van project. So we're going to um, do quite a number of steps related all to the wall, obviously. The first is I need to install uh, my shore power because I have to drill a hole in the side. And then I'm gonna remove the panels that are here that came with the van that was with the package I got. It, it was the walls and the floor, which the floor I would, again, highly recommend. It was super useful to have uh, on the walls. I was thinking maybe using them, but I don't think in the end I'm going to. They're actually pretty thin, uh, but they do have a nice coating on the back that you could use as one of your layers. So um, anyway, so I'm gonna take them all off like I did here already. And then we're, we will put uh, kill mat so remember I have one more box left. So that um, only needs 25% coverage. So unlike the floor that I did 100% coverage with, uh, it'll just go every so often. We'll talk about that when we get to it. Uh, and then uh, Reflectix will go over that and that will be, uh, we'll cut it out for each of the, the panels, if you will, and stick it inside the, uh, the wall. And then after that, um, I am actually not gonna run all my electrical. Sometimes I've seen people do that uh, run all electrical 12 volt 120 everything gets done now but to be <laughs> open it's a little overwhelming trying to figure out every place for your electronics all along the way um, and all, have it done all right now before you kind of have some of the other structure in place so uh, I, instead I'm gonna just do my 120 drops and I'm gonna use uh, metal clad which this particular metal clad actually already has the wiring in it for my 120 so it'll be great because uh, when I run it up and over down to my different drops and in the walls I won't have to worry about damaging the uh, the wire when I put on my my final uh, boards for the ceiling and and the wall then following that uh, it'll come the, the process of, of stuffing every one of the cavities uh, and every surface I can find with this Havelock wool talk about that when we get to it and then finally uh, we'll use the reflectix again and put it over everything it'll look kind of like a spaceship in here uh, and that'll be the final vapor barrier so part of insulation and this is the disclaimer that everybody <laughs> gives when they get to this part of their van build is there are so many different uh, ways to do insulation um, so I'm actually not quite sure there's there's a right or wrong way as long as you do something. And part of the comment is is this front section here is is such a big heat and cold sink uh, for a van that you know it's important to have uh, insulation everywhere. But you might need to solve this if the heat and cold become a problem. Um, in terms of insulation, when you do it, there are a couple principles. You want an air gap so that whatever you have in there can create the insulation itself. You want that air gap to help with the R value, if you will, 
you want a heat barrier and you want a vapor barrier uh, because you don't want moisture getting into the walls and going down on everything. And so uh, I feel like so that the kill mat is it is really just meant for noise. It has a little bit of a of a help with the uh, you know the heat and cold, but really it's the first layer of Reflectix that I'm going to put on that that is part of my insulation, and then it's the Havelock wool that will create you know this this uh, air gap, if you will. And there's a lot of great properties about Havelock in terms of the antimicrobial. It's natural. Um, it's a renewable. Uh, resource, if you will, and uh, it's got you know a reasonable R value, and then by putting the Reflectix back over everything again, and making sure it's sealed tight with tape and everything, that'll become the vapor barrier and an additional uh, heat barrier or insulation barrier. So a combination of all those things, I think, will will do nicely in here. Uh, the roof will be done next next step. So for now, I'm just working on walls the my only caveat is in terms of holes you want to try to drill all your holes now um, that are going to go in and down through things so that's why i am doing the uh, the shore power i need to drill a couple more holes one of them is for some wires i'm going to have go in the back related to uh, my uh, plumbing uh, and Another couple related to, I am going to have a 24 volt go down in the back to go to a compressor that I'm going to put in. So I have to think about exactly where I want those, and then I'll, I'll try to work on drilling those holes uh, this round as well, because obviously it's going to be a lot easier than having to remove insulation and get to it again. All right, so let's get going. All right, so this is going to be for putting the shore power through, and you obviously can put it anywhere in your van. I'm picking this spot for a couple reasons. One is it's highly protected by lots of metal around it. It's also very, very strong right here. I've seen on uh, one uh, install video, which I think is an excellent idea, putting a block of wood behind it to and cutting a hole in that wood to create additional support. But I don't think it's going to be needed here because it's literally uh, welded all around this piece so I think it'll be good also again it protects from anything on the back end hitting it uh, and I also want it to be really close to where I'm hooking everything up because the shorter the run the uh, less loss in energy and I figured this is gonna be my main pipe when recharging at least plugged in so I'm gonna start with a pilot uh, just roughly in the center doesn't have to be I know it sounds kind of crazy because I'm cutting a hole in my van but I don't feel like it has to be perfectly exact center because from the other side you're not going to see it. So here we go. And now we'll, uh, we'll go to the other side and actually drill the hole. All right, so we, uh, I did the pilot hole. Uh, I stuck some tape on to help or stop any chipping as I'm drilling from this side. I have my two and seven eighths hole saw, and I've heard from people <laughs> or seen that pretty much by the end of a van build, you end up having almost every hole saw size there is because there's almost no two uh, diameters that are the same for things you need to mount to the outside of your van. Anyways, so we'll, uh, we'll now drill. This is the part I'm a little more nervous about in terms of not screwing up my paint job. Actually, that looks really clean. 
All right, so it's time to take up the panels on this side of the wall. This will be one of the last steps I do to prep for my boys coming and help me do the insulation stuff that I was talking about a little bit ago. Let's get going. There we go. Panel one of five. Four more to go. There we go. So now uh, the whole wall's ready. All right, so I am now still working on holes related to uh, the wall work I'm about to do. And I, as I mentioned earlier, I want to make sure I put all the holes in uh, that I need that get to the bottom of the van because it's going to be a lot easier to do now before insulation gets put in. So the nice thing with this van is that there are all, there's already in the, in the support or the frame, I guess, there's already a massive hole about two, maybe three inches in diameter that uh, exits. And there's a, there's a, rubber grommet that's in it that's capped off that you can pull off and use. So I have an exit for everything. I just need to get things down into that point. But also, luckily, you can see here, there are some entry points going down. So on this side, it's enough. I actually threaded this in so that I could pull my wire through when I need to. On this side, however, there's gonna be quite a few more things because my water is gonna be up here in terms of my pump and uh, the sink, and so I need a drain valve, and I need the water to come in and out, so I've got, I need a few more holes on this side, so I'm gonna drill. I have this massive one inch drill, so I'm gonna use this and drill maybe three holes. I think I only need two but more, but I'm gonna do it just in case, and it also gives me one for electrical if I need to put some additional stuff in there. We're gonna start with a pilot hole. That was all over the map. I just need to vacuum it up. We're gonna do the first two steps of the four steps for insulating the walls. The first step is gonna be the kill mat, and we just need to place you know, a little bit on each opening. We'll also do it up here, even though there is some type of noise dampening, 
I mentioned before, it's, it's, it's like really hard. It's hard as a rock, so I actually don't know. I mean, it probably helps some, but this will be better. So we'll put a piece all along the side, and then following that, we'll cut up the reflectance and place it as the actual heat shield, the first layer of heat shield. And then next time we'll, uh, we'll talk about the wool. So that's it, we're gonna go to work. Wow, well, it's been a long day. It started uh, pretty early this morning, but now I've gotten through everything that I wanted to today. So the goal was to uh, drill the holes related to any future wiring or plumbing needs that I, I needed. The, also to do the first two of four steps for insulation, which is adding the kill mat uh, in the van. And then as you can see here, putting the reflectix everywhere. So my son and I, we cut it all first and then to make sure it would fit. And then we went back and sprayed with some spray adhesive. I will tell you that this job definitely goes faster with two people. So he was outside spraying and handing me everything as I was uh, sticking it up. So it was great. Anyways, we're good. So looking forward to tomorrow where we do the next two steps. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, hey. I am just finishing prepping for my work today, which is gonna be the second half of the insulation. But while you're here, it's perfect timing. Why don't I show you, go around back, why don't I show you, um, I marked out the floor, and I can give you an overview of what the van's gonna look like in 2D. So go around back and I'll open up. All right, can you see here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the uh, the blue tape uh, denotes basically outside outside wood structure in some way, and then there's dotted blue, which means it's it's uh, like just an in internal lines of some type. And then um, I'll have some green tape that I'll show you in a second. So this back here, the van's roughly cut in half in this point. On this side, we've got. Uh, my garage and in here we're gonna have two I'm hoping it's three bikes but I'm not entirely sure I will get three in here I might have been too overzealous in my my thinking I can definitely get two though and uh, they'll stop about here and then this upper section is completely clear and this will be things like pumps and uh, the induction stove will be here a sink will be up here because remember my tires go like that, so I should have some additional space. Uh, and actually, I'll probably put my, my pumps, water pumps here. Underneath this whole area, on this side, is gonna be my, uh, I'm gonna actually get an extended gas tank. It'll take up most of the space. On this side, underneath the van, I'm gonna have my gray and fresh water tanks. And in the back, I'm gonna have a, um, 
24 volt compressor. And then on, uh, so on this side, the, the blue here is cabinets. They'll go around here all the way up to the ceiling, actually. And then down here in the green, and I'll explain a lot more about this when we get to electrical in a few more spots, uh, but this is an, an electrical box, um, a power unit really, that I got from Tiny Watts Solar. And um, it's, it's amazing, it's got everything you need built into one system. But again, we'll talk about that more later. And then back here, the dotted line right here is that my cabinets will go all the way to here, but when we get to about this spot, uh, it'll be, it'll be, it'll kind of cut in and leave a blank for the bed to slide out this way. And also for me to get to all the controls in the power unit under here. Uh, on this side, we've got the, the couch, right? And everything in this van has to have, well, almost everything has to have multiple purposes or multiple functionalities because it's just too small to be able to have any unitaskers. So uh, this couch right here yeah, is going to be a, uh, have two seatbelts in it so I can have two more people sit in it. It's also going to open up and be split uh, kind of one third, two thirds. And this two thirds is going to open up and I'm going to store underneath my, my cooler, my Dometic cooler, refrigerator unit, and then uh, it's going to pull out and form a bed, but that's actually too small for me. So I want to make it a full, so I'm going to make it so that and you'll see when we get to it, um, the end folds down and actually makes a true full size, which is a uh, 54 inches by 74 or 75 inches. And I think I can eke out possibly even a queen, um, potentially, by allowing something to the head, but I don't think I need to go that far. Anyways, so that's the, that's the overall of the layout. So hopefully you can enjoy watching as we build that stuff out. But for now, we're gonna do the installation, uh, the last two steps, which is, it's actually technically three steps. The first one is gonna be where I, uh, I run my, my 120 volts everywhere and that's what I was also doing here you can see I started marking where my 120 volts are gonna go because unlike the 12 volts which I'm gonna do after the fact uh, I want the 120s to be behind everything and so I'll show that and then uh, we're gonna put in wool insulation we'll talk about that when we get to it and finally we'll do the reflectix which will be over everything and kind of close this off as a vapor barrier so that's it we get going as I started thinking about how I was going to wire my high voltage uh, outlets, I uh, went through the normal process of individual wires, say 12 gauge, uh, then also looked at what the most commonly used in vans, which is Romex, which has an extra layer of insulation around it and protection. Um, some people even use conduit to yet do another layer of protection and um, or sometimes providing them the ability to thread additional wire in the future. When I came across this metal clad, it seemed to have a nice mixture of everything. And if you get me the metal clad with the wire already in it, you um, it actually is a very, very small diameter for what you get. And you get all the other protections. Metal clad is actually used in construction for difficult to wire locations uh, in or high mo moisture areas, and it can even be exposed. So this really fits the bill for what I was looking for. Uh, and it was um, easy stuff to use. All right, so we're now at the second part of doing the insulation, which is, um, we use, so already I ran all the 120 lines to the respective spots using the metal clad, like I talked about. And now we're stuffing the wool, the Havelock wool into every single spot we can find so we're just starting out the process right now you can see there's one of the bags and I'll, I'll show it again in a little bit when we're through doing stuffing
All right, so this is so much work doing this string, and in the end, it doesn't work very well. I even went and tied little corners through it to try to keep it up, but it sags. And you could use adhesive spray on the back, but we're trying to just stay away from that as much as possible. So, got the idea to just use duct tape. And I know it's not natural or anything like that, but darn, it works really good. Holds it up, and it also, the stickiness in the back of the duct tape causes the, the wool to stay in place. So, we are going with that. I decided to take a little bit of a different tact on how I doing the ordering of things. Uh, my original plan was to do the insulation completely, including the Reflectix, uh, the last piece, which is the vapor barrier, so everything looked like a spaceship, and then I would stick the uh, furring strips on top of it. Uh, in the end, though, it, I realized it was actually a bit of a pain to keep this insulation up. There are some really neat tricks out there by people. I've seen somebody uh, use, actually, I didn't even see it at first, and we did it ourselves, and it worked really well, which is to use duct tape and hold it up and then you would do the uh, Reflectix over it. However, uh, we didn't get, we did the duct tape and the next day we came back and it had all fallen down, which was fine uh, because I had then decided that I was gonna do the furring strips underneath the final coating of Reflectix. And for two reasons. Uh, one, I wanted to put these support beams uh, across the larger empty spaces. Uh, I figured that could actually hold the wool insulation, which was great. And then the next thing I wanted to do was put the furring strips on because uh, re for Reflectix to really have a value besides the vapor barrier, which I'm going to do still, uh, there needs to be about a half to three quarters of an air gap between whatever it is uh, in order to create that insulation barrier. And so by putting the furring strips underneath, I'll actually get that gap. So uh, this is what it looks like on this side. It starts out right and we're going to stick uh, these three support beams and then we'll put the insulation behind it and do the next section. Uh, and then we'll actually go and put the furring strips all along this wall and then we're done. The last piece, which I'm not 100% sure is, I might put another furring strip up here just because this is where the cabinets are. And then I'm actually gonna put some furring strips down the center to help uh, with supporting the wall, which will go this way. This in the end might be overkill because I'm doing this big grid pattern, but I figured I have the space uh, meaning in here to, to do it. So um, I don't think it hurts. And uh, I think that's it. I'm also going to create down here some support plates for my electrical wires to come out. And then I've got a trick that I'm gonna try for prepping for my 12 volt. My 12 volt I'm gonna do after the Reflectix is completely up because I want to be able to change things out in the future. So but I need channels for them to go through. So I'm gonna see if it works and if it does, I'll, I'll show it to you. Um, if it doesn't work, then I'll have to figure something else and I'll show you that too. All right, thanks. step is to go to Home Depot, get a few more of these uh, uh, furring strips, uh, I guess they call them combo uh, wood as well, and uh, I've got to install a couple of my 110 outlet, and that's it. Then it's time to put the Reflectix over the outside of everything, and we move to the ceiling. Uh, slight change in plans, which is okay. That's kind of what a big project does or is about, as long as those changes don't, uh, you know, um, set you back too much. So I decided, actually after talking to a friend of mine, that I was going to go and do most of my wiring now at this stage before I actually put the Reflectix up. So I will show you that next. Uh, Alright, so I am at 
my uh, last wire to put in in my, I guess, pre-electrical phase. So I thought I would just do a quick video showing how I go about doing this. So um, I pretty much just map out where I want to go on the roof everywhere. I've mapped out all my different lighting locations to make sure I have the wire that goes to the correct spot. And then over here uh, is where my panel is going to be, my light switches, my on off switches. So, um, and then everything routes around and then goes down to where my uh, power unit is going to go, which will be another, another segment. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll get going. Cut it off. Let's go to about here. Give myself a little extra room for when I wire up the, the power unit. And then I'll just label the wire. That's it. I'm done. Next. Hello. Okay. So I'm in a happy place right now in that I finally finished my all my pre wiring. And I will say that it was a bit of a detour. I was planning on doing. Sort of the high voltage stuff which is the 110 first and i was going to do the 12 volt later after i kind of got the reflectors put on the walls but uh as mentioned previously decided to do it all uh before i get the reflecting stuff which i think was the right decision uh it does make it a little more overwhelming because you need to have all the answers first uh in order to figure out where things go but once you're done it feels good right so uh all of this marine uh, cabling is 12 volt and you can see it's, it's basically like a spaghetti mess in here it centers from this one area down here and while it's there's a lot and it's thick I'll be stripping this back to just the bare wires uh, so the insulation isn't isn't covered and I have everything flow through here and I tried to build a few things that keep the the wires organized uh, and then we've got the higher voltage stuff which also comes into here uh, which is this metal clad and I talked about that also <clears throat> one of the I guess one of the tips around this is, to make things easier is just start by uh, putting stickers or tape in different places of all the, the different uh, 
outlet you want. So you can see up here, I've got my, my high voltage and then my little circles represent 12 volt. And you can see over here, same thing. You uh, down below, I actually have a couple more uh, 12 and a 24 volt that go down and uh, I already put a hole through the bottom and then fished it through so it's it's ready to be used uh, let's see on uh, on this side right here you can see another uh, 110 outlet and there is a 12 volt coming here I have all of my my higher voltage right here and in this this is going to be where my stove is and a couple other things so that's going to be uh, yet another uh, end point destination uh, anyways, I won't go into all of it, but my the, the point I'm trying to make is that uh, it pays to mark everything up. And that way when you run stuff, you feel like you've covered all the bases. Up above, I have put all my wiring for my uh, lighting and my fan and everything else. Again, taking up up here, I don't know if you can see it, but taking up where things are gonna be so that I know I don't miss anything. With that, I. I think, cross my fingers, I'm actually done with my wiring and I can now move into having, uh, putting the reflective stuff which will be the next step. Oh, and everything comes in here for a switch. So again, you need to think through things because after you wire it, it's, it's really hard to go back. But uh, again, uh, everything will come in here. So certain things like light switches or lights will have switches to turn off and on, whereas uh, other things that are just pure 12 volt outlets, I don't need a switch because it's either going to be on or off by the fact I'm, you know, plugging things into it. Uh, and I actually had to run some other stuff. This is for my controller unit that is going to help be powered and communicate for the uh, solar as well as everything else. And everything comes in, as you could imagine, everything comes into here because this is where my, my power station is going to go. And I'll talk about that when I when I bring it in, but it's a pretty cool unit. So with that, I, uh, I think I'll sign off and uh, call this part of the project done. Thanks. All right, so I, I think I start everything with all right. So I'm excited that uh, this is one of the last big steps of the walls of the prep work. So much work goes into doing things that you can't see uh, up to this stage when with the van build. So we went ahead and obviously all the frame strips are here and we used some double-sided wood, uh, wood flooring tape to help with the adhesive property when we put the reflectics up. I think it's pretty straightforward. We're gonna measure the whole wall, cut it, and then cut around the various pillars and use the silver tape to seal everything up. So with that, let's get going.
just thinking about it, I need to cut a 18 inches off this entire amount so we can roll it out. And I figured might as well just cut through the whole thing. So a quick tip is to put a, a U-bracket or U-bolt at the end of your van. And uh, what it does is it allows you to hook a hammock or lights or anything you want to when you're camping. It makes it half as hard or twice as easy to do because you always hook the hammock to this side and then the other side to a tree or whatever. Uh, I'm going to put two in here just so I can, I can do two of them pretty easily. And I actually got this one from watching Nate Murphy on uh, his van builds. So I need to uh, remove the panels on the back in order to insulate behind them. And so this is what it looks like when it's done. Basically, there's uh, magnets that hold the top portion of it that, that are nothing. And then there's obviously a lot more resistance down below. And you, uh, you just pop the door off and these stay, some of them stay in and some of them pop out. But any ones that stay in, just take your tool. And then you can put them back in the channel that they belong. And that way it's ready. Here it is. That way it's ready to pop back on after you do all the insulation. You also need this if you want to do like a rear camera. But I don't need that because uh, mine actually came with one right up there. And then taking the panel off up above is super easy. Uh, it's like we did the side panels inside the truck. Another thing I'm doing 
for my wires is, even though this is all gonna be behind my electrical box, I have a, uh, a purchased quasi turnkey electrical system in terms of at least the power station portion of it. And um, I, I want the wires to come out and not really move around once you know everything gets going. So I thought I would drill holes into my wood to have the wires kind of come through at the correct angles. Good morning. So I, uh, I thought I would show some things that I found um, as I'm doing some of my electrical work right now before I kind of put the final uh, insulation layer on my wall. I am in the process of installing my 110 outlets uh, so that they're behind the, uh, the reflectix final layer and I can finish my installation and so on. Uh, and in order to install it, I had to install some support boards and uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys have probably seen this before, but I haven't. Uh, it's a 90 degree angle. And this thing is amazing. <laughs> it's so useful. Um, the only thing just to remember is it takes the hex ends installed, but you can even drill with it. So I was able to put the board up and drill through it with this into the metal so that I could do a pilot and then I could screw these in. Uh, very useful, like that. So now I am going to, uh, I need to get, this is the metal clad, and uh, 
one of the downsides of this I realized as I was doing it is as you're pulling it through your van, you can hear it hitting the inside. So I'm sure I got a lot of micro scrapes on things, uh, which obviously isn't good from a van to, to take off some of the protective coatings, the protective paint. I'm just hoping it didn't like, you know, go to the underlying uh, coating. In any case, uh, it's, it's done. And I wanted to show another little trick. So metal clad, you actually, in order to get to the wire underneath, you're supposed to use this, this tool that basically cuts around the outside and gives a relatively clean cut. Um, I, uh, I didn't want to buy the tool. They're not super expensive, like 30 bucks. So I ended up getting two uh, grips and you can do it this way where you Clip it on. Let me just do it, not on my tape. And you untwist, basically. And all you're doing is unwinding. And you can see it it unwinds it at the at your bottom grip. And then you can just peel it off. They're locking grips, by the way. I was just I was forgetting what they're called. Anyways, so you can have two locking grips. And then you just take a pair of cutters and done. And the nice thing is if you don't have locking grips, you can, uh, they're, they're less money than the cutter is. And then you actually have a tool that's not a unitasker. Another downside to this metal clad that I learned, I still like it because it's completely shielded from anything I might do to the van later. But in terms of you know, screwing into the side. But another thing that I, I discovered was that uh, this is solid, solid wire. And I saw a video, uh, post a link because I like, like his work, that he talked about how you should use stranded wire instead of solid because if you bend it back and forth enough times, eventually the solid wire breaks and then how do you fix it, right, inside your van. But if it's a stranded wire, you, um, you, you might get a few breaks but there's you know like 25 strands in each side inside each wire so you've got a lot of redundancy it made a lot of sense uh, but it was too late for me <laughs>
the wires around. Now, in most cases, there's it's easy to do. You can actually go uh, inside the walls of the van, or as you see up above my head, you can put it up above and go uh, in the roof section. But when you add the furring strips, the furring strips are attached directly to the side walls. And in some cases, there are no gaps to be able to get the wires through. So I came up with the idea of using a router and to set the router uh, shallow enough so it didn't go all the way through the furring strips, but I could cut channels through. Uh, and that seemed to work very well.